Welcome everyone to our virtual cooking class today. Glad you could join me. We're going to be making lunch together. So my name is Kate Watts. I'm a registered dietitian with the Live Life Well employee well-being team. And we're going to be making a really delicious and easy recipe that's going to come together really fast. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and jump in and get started. So this is sheet pan fajitas. But we are doing a twist on this monthly recipe and are actually making fajita bowls. So instead of tortillas, we're going to just put our cooked items over a bowl of rice with some toppings. So it should make for a quick and easy and delicious lunch and makes for great leftovers to use throughout the week. So if you have questions for me as we start cooking, please open up that chat box and type them there. I will keep an eye on that as we start um, this recipe. So I've got all my ingredients already laid out. First thing we're gonna do is turn on the broiler to our oven. And we're gonna go as high as it can go. So for me, that's 500 degrees. And so a broiler simply means that we're only heating the top of the oven. So the heat source is only coming from the top. We're not heating the entire oven. So things are gonna cook really fast and get nice and crisp. So just be aware of that. We're gonna keep a good eye on anything we put in that oven today. Okay, so I'm going to be doing the plant based version of our recipe, which is with tofu. If you have chicken, I'll kind of talk you through that as well. The recipe works great with both. And honestly, you could eliminate either one of those and still have a really delicious veggie bowl. But we want to get that good source of protein to keep us full. Um, even though our rice and beans will also have some protein, the tofu that we're using today is going to add that extra uh, fullness and that extra protein punch. So we're gonna start out just by putting our spices together. And so the recipe calls for a tablespoon of chili powder. And then we're gonna mix that with a teaspoon of pepper and two teaspoons of salt. And we're gonna use this seasoning blend on everything. We're gonna use it on the peppers and onions. We're gonna use it on whichever protein. And because I'm adding uh, no salt added black beans to my bowl, I'm actually going to season them with this as well, just to give them a little bit more flavor before we put them in the bowl at the end. So let's get our teaspoon of pepper here. And if you've cooked with me before, you know, I generally don't measure out my spices too much. Now, salt, I think it's a good idea to, you know, keep the tabs on how much we're using. And in fact, for this recipe, I'm going to half that. I'm just going to do a teaspoon of salt along with that teaspoon of pepper. And I'm just stirring up our spices there. Obviously, the chili powder is going to be the main color. And it's also going to give our roasted veggies a nice color, a nice browning um, with that on there as well. All right, so now that we have our spices, first thing we're going to do is get our peppers and onions going in the oven. So we need to slice those up and then we'll add the seasoning and the oil, the olive oil. So I'm going to start with our onion. We want nice strips like you would see in fajitas. So you're going to want to cut the onion halfway through the top. Okay, so you wouldn't want to cut it in half, like turn it on its side and cut it in half. We're wanting to cut it through the top. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And the reason for that, you can get nice strips either way. The reason for that is the onion's gonna stay together better if you have the, um, the ends, I guess, of the onion um, on the side there and not on the top. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. We're just gonna do one half. So with this onion, we're gonna cut it into strips. So what I'm gonna do is cut off one end and now I'm gonna peel off my paper paper. I'm going to peel off the outside of the onion. <laughs> okay, so we've got this. And so now I'm going to make my strips along this way. And so this little part of the bulb is going to keep my onion nicely together for me. I'm going to hold it as well, but it's going to make it really easy for me to get those slices that I want. Okay, so I'm just going to start going along like this. And again, I'm keeping my fingers back out of the way and I'm moving them as I chop. I'm using a larger chef's knife because this is a large onion and I'm just doing like a rocking motion, right? So they can get those nice slices. And if you're new to knife skills, just go nice and slow, okay? You wanna get that good rocking motion and keep those fingers back in case you have 
a little bit of a nice look like that. So what I'm getting are these slices that then when they break apart, they're my nice thin little fajita strips. So I'm gonna just start to break these apart with my fingers and lay them out on our baking sheet. I've used some parchment paper, nonstick parchment paper today. Um, it is gonna get brown under the broiler, um, but that doesn't bother me. You can also use foil, which won't do that. So I've just spread out our onions evenly, and now we're gonna add our peppers. So let's clear our working space. Now these call for mini bell peppers. So I do have some smaller ones. I had a, a regular size green pepper. They didn't have those in the minis at my store. So what I'm gonna do is actually use a smaller um, kind of knife for these. And there's a few different ways you can cut peppers. So one way is just to cut off the top and bottom. Now you're gonna lose some of the pepper flesh that way, but it definitely is one of the easier methods. So now you're left with the core and the outer edge of the pepper, which is what we want. So I'm just gonna slice on each side around the core. And this is the part I'm gonna toss with all the seeds. Oh, I forgot to put my cat up y'all. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh goodness. Okay, so now we've got our slices of peppers. Now the seeds are edible, um, however, they can add, some types of pepper seeds can add more spice, so you may or may not want that. Um, and of course, there's a texture thing to them. Some of them don't have the best flavor, so I tend to get rid of the seeds from the peppers. Um, I just use my knife to kind of, you know, if I see a seed on there, I just kind of use my knife to, to brush it off. Um, you could use a paper towel or a kitchen towel, but usually with your kitchen tools, you can easily remove those. So we've got some nice red on our baking sheet. Now I'm gonna to go to my orange pepper. So this one, you can see I'm gonna cut a different way. I've actually cut this one in half and you can see the core and the seeds there. So the top and bottom is still intact. So what I'm gonna do is just start to slice. And as I get to the white flesh that I don't want, I'm gonna cut it out or cut around it. So I'm gonna start just turning this on its side a little bit and making some strips. And as I get to this center core, I'm gonna go to the other side and just kind of cut around it and cut it out. Okay, so I don't want that part. I'm left with the other half of that pepper. I'm gonna cut it into slices and throw it on our baking sheet. Now, it doesn't matter how you arrange these because we're gonna be adding oil and spices. I'm gonna cut this one the same way as our orange one. Um, so we're going to be moving it all around and mixing it up anyway. All right, get to the core. Another thing you can do is from the top. I'll, I'll show you on this yellow. <clears throat> I love this recipe because it's got lots of color. So use whatever color peppers you want, but I'd say the more colors, the better to make this just a really yummy looking uh, festive dish. Now for this one, we're going to, this might be a little harder with the smaller one. <laughs> with the larger ones, you can also go in the top if you're a little bit more used to handling a knife <laughs> and you can actually cut out the core from the top, right? Mm -hmm. And it might be good to kind of cut this in half and then you've removed the core, okay? And then I've just got <clears throat> lots of seeds in this one. So now I've got a few different parts that I, I still wanna remove this white core here. So I'm gonna slice and as I get there, you could scoop it out so that you're still getting the yellow flesh behind it, or you could just cut it and toss it. Just, you know, we don't wanna be wasteful, but depending on your knife skill level and your time, <laughs> you can decide what works best for you. All right, so I'm just gonna knock those seeds off, get our yellow strips on there. So we've got a nice colorful baking dish ready to go into the broiler. And so we're gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil to that. All right. And then we're gonna add half of our spice blend. We're gonna save the other half for your chicken or your tofu, whichever one you're, you plan to do. Okay, so I'm just gonna... And you know, I'm not even gonna use half because this looks like plenty. That was just a teaspoon because um, I'm doing a smaller batch here. 
and I want to save some for my beans as well. So with this, you can either use some tongs to just combine everything. You're wanting to make sure you get everything through that olive oil and we're trying to like distribute those spices. You can use your hands. Of course, I washed my hands before I even started this process. So if I want to use my hands, I can do that. Just going to be a little messier. So now I want to try to spread them out as best I can so that we get that good roast and char. Okay. So I'm going to pop these into our broiler and set a timer. I'm putting mine right in the middle of the oven because I know my broiler and it's very hot and cooks very quickly and I don't want them to get too burnt before I'm ready to add the next ingredient. So I'm going on that middle rack. Also, um, I'm setting a timer because I'm notorious for forgetting about things and burning them. <laughs> So we're gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. I may end up checking it before that, okay? So now we're ready to move on to our protein. I'm actually gonna... Use this towel here, clean my space. Now, if you're using chicken, you would wanna switch um, to a non-porous cutting board. So like a glass cutting board, you wouldn't wanna use bamboo like I am because it's gonna be really hard to adequately clean and sanitize this surface after raw meat has touched it. Now I'm not doing meat, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the same cutting board. And so what I'm gonna do is I've got some extra firm tofu here and I've already opened the package and drained the liquid. When you open tofu, you're going to want to do it over the sink because it's going to be full to the top of liquid. And you want to drain that out as best you can. And then we're going to take out our block of tofu. And this is extra firm, so I don't need to press it very much. But I do want to get some more of that liquid out because we're going to be roasting in the oven. And I want it to get nice and crunchy outside with a cooked inside. So with this cube, I'm just going to gently with this paper towel, press down on it here and just get a little bit more of that moisture out. I don't wanna to push too hard because I want it to stay in this nice cube because I'm gonna cut my tofu into some cubed sections. Just gonna, and you know, you could start this before you start the recipe and just let it sit there between the paper towels and let that, or, or a clean kitchen towel would work fine. And that way it can um, absorb. I mean, you can see how much liquid is coming out of that. And so just like any um, softer vegetable you're gonna roast, like mushrooms or eggplant, you wanna really get as much moisture out as you can. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my large chef's knife. And I'm just gonna cut this into some cubes and pick, you know, about half an inch by half an inch. So I'm gonna just start by slicing my tofu and then I'm gonna turn it on its side, slice it again. And you just want them to be in pretty evenly sized chunks so that they can cook evenly in the oven. And now the great thing about tofu is not only is it a really high protein uh, plant-based protein source, but it really takes on any flavor you give it. Now the bad thing about tofu is it needs for you to add flavor to it. So it is, it is a blank canvas. Um, and it's very similar in texture to eggs. So you do wanna be cooked eggs. So you do wanna gently you know, handle it. So I'm going to put these cubes into my bowl so that we can flavor them. And again, you really want to make sure to flavor. Now the roasting is gonna help, you know, bring out some flavor, but we really wanna rely on some herbs and spices of any kind, whatever dish you're using them in. So of course we're going this fiesta route today. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple of teaspoons of our flavoring and then a drizzle of olive oil. Okay, now if you're doing chicken with me here, you're going to have cut it into strips added it to the bowl, and then washed your hands really good uh, with soap and water. And then you're ready to come back and add your spices and oil to the chicken. And now we're just gonna mix this all together. So if you have chicken, I'd recommend using um, some tongs. If you use your hands, you're gonna need to wash your hands again. Um, with the tofu, I 
think I'm going to just use my hands because I don't want to break apart the cubes with the tongs as I'm mixing it here. So I'm just going to really gently mix my tofu till I get it all nice and covered in the oil. And you know what I'm going to do here um, as well? I'm going to rinse my hands. I'm going to add just the tiniest bit of cornstarch so that my tofu can get a little crispier in under the broiler. And you can do this uh, with chicken too, honestly. Um, but just a, just a, I'm not even going to use the whole teaspoon, just like half a teaspoon of that um, cornstarch so that it'll get a little crispier on the outside. Just that's how I like it. So go ahead and mix that up. So we are going to throw this on the same pan as our peppers and toss it back in the broiler and then we're going to get to work on our toppings. Okay. All right, so let's see how our peppers are going. It's been five minutes. And they are looking good when I tested this out. They cooked really fast in my oven, so I'm going to go ahead and take them out of the tofu. Okay, so you can see we've got, oh, that smells so good. Um, we've got some char starting to happen. And so what we're gonna do is just carefully handling the top pan. We're gonna add our tofu. Now you can add it right on top. Um, I'm gonna actually kind of scoop these peppers to the side. So if you've got your chicken, you can just toss it right on top. And then we're gonna add that to our baking sheet. And another great thing about this recipe is you can do this whole step ahead of time and then you've got your cooked protein and your cooked veggies and then it's really easy to assemble these base ingredients into many different meals so you could wrap this up in a tortilla with toppings and have an actual fajita you can throw it on top of a bowl of rice and black beans with toppings like we're going to do today um, and so it's going to be able to be pretty versatile on how you want to use these ingredients. Okay, so I've just arranged my tofu on there to the side, and I'm going to toss that back under the broiler. I'm going to reset my timer for, I'm going to check on it in about five minutes. I think it's going to probably take a good 10, um, but we'll just take a look and see how, how things are going in about five minutes. So now we're going to start working on our toppings. First thing is our limes. We want to squeeze a lime and cut up some lime wedges. I find that when you're trying to cook with less salt and fat and more herbs and spices, um, it's good to have some acid in your um, recipe as well. And so fresh lemons, fresh limes, zest of a lime or an orange is really um, helpful in punching in some flavor into a really healthy dish. So we're gonna do our limes today. If you've cooked with me before, you know the trick for squeezing a lime is to prep it first. And so by that, I mean, taking your palm of your hand and rolling it on the counter, and you're just gonna kind of soften it up and it's gonna be a lot easier to squeeze more of that juice out. So once I've kind of put some elbow grease into this, I'm gonna cut my lime in half. Just using my chef's knife. Again, if you use chicken at this point, you're going to want to move your cutting board, remove any knives or utensils or anything that touched the raw chicken into the sink, wash your hands, and we're going to want to pull out a clean cutting board and a clean knife. So I've just been doing vegetables and plant-based stuff, so I can use the same knife. So I'm going to cut my lime in half. And then you can, of course, squeeze this by hand. You might want to use your hand underneath as a filter to catch any seeds. Um, but I actually have this nice handy uh, juicer that works really well. So what I'm going to do is place my lime um, flat side down, so opposite of the shape you're looking at here. And it's going to get a good amount of juice out of that lime and completely flip it inside out. <laughs> so now you can see we've gotten every bit of juice out of there piling up on my scraps here <laughs> all right so we're going to squeeze the other half because they want the juice of one whole line and then we're going to cut our other line into wedges for just garnish 
you put it on the side of the bowl or the side of the plate. And then as people are eating, if they want to add more lime juice, they have their little lime wedge um, to squeeze there. All right, so let's get this other lime prepped. And then to do my lime wedges, I um, like to actually do the whole lime, so I'm not going to cut it in half. What I am going to do is cut off the ends. Okay, now I'm going to cut it in half long, uh, the long way. And now I'm going to lay it down on its flat side so that it's easier to cut and doesn't roll around on me. And I'm just going to cut it into some wedges. And I just think cutting off the ends just make them look more neat and tidy um, and are a little easier to squeeze, I think. So I'm just going to put those in that bowl there. All right. So we've got our lime juice and our lime wedges ready to go. And I'm going to check my recipe to see if they wanted any lime juice added to the cooking mixture. Let's see. Nope, we're going to drizzle with lime juice once we remove them. So, okay, uh, the rice. So I'm doing this as a rice bowl and Generally, you can cook rice however you like to cook rice, whether it's on the stove or in a rice cooker or an Instapot. But I just wanted to show you a convenient option today that would be really quick and easy for lunch or say you wanted to pack leftovers from what we're making in the oven for lunch and you didn't cook any rice. You could do a really convenient option like a microwavable rice pouch or bowl. Now, the reason I want to talk about these is because some of these are really loaded with sodium and preservatives, which we'd want to stay away from. But these kind, if you just get the plain white rice, brown rice, basmati rice, jasmine rice, without any kind of flavorings or anything like that, it actually has zero milligrams of sodium. So this is a ready rice, long grain white. And this is a brown basmati, which is what I'm going to use today. If you can do a brown rice, um, that's going to have a little bit more fiber. This actually has two grams of fiber per cup and four grams for the whole pouch. So that's a good dose of fiber in addition to all the veggies that we're going to be getting. Um, so for this, I'm going to just break it apart. As the directions say, I'm going to tear a little vent in the top, about an inch and a half to two inches. And that's our timer to check on our peppers and tofu. I'm going to throw this in the microwave for 90 seconds, a minute and a half, and that's going to be the base for my bowl today. So let's pull out our peppers, see what they're looking like. All right, these look great. So try not to spill, but we've got a good char on our peppers and onions. Our tofu is looking good. I'm just going to kind of test the texture of it. It could definitely get crispier. So we're going to throw this back in for another five minutes. And I think I'm going to move it to the top rack this time. So once that's done, we'll start our timer. So the last topping that we need to prep is our beans. And so I'm going to show you. I've already rinsed and drained uh, my black beans. Again, these are canned, but they are no salt added. And so what I'm going to do is add a little flavoring to it. So rinse, drain beans, I'm going to put in a bowl. I'm using my same tofu bowl. Again, if you did chicken, that bowl should be in the sink away from everything else and you want to use a fresh bowl. And then I'm going to take that same seasoning that we've been using, chili powder, pepper, and a little bit of salt. And then a little bit of oil, olive oil. And then we'll mix our beans. So this is just going to give them a nice flavor instead of uh, being so plain once we assemble our dish. So let's get our rice out, let that cool. Now with the pouches, be really careful. They do get really hot and all the steam coming out. So you want to be careful where you grab the edge of the pouch. 
I'm going to pull that out and I'm just going to sit it to the side and let it cool down a moment before I open it all the rest of the way. Just going to clear our space so we can prep our bowl. Just got a nice dinner bowl here. Going to go ahead and open up that rice and just pour a small serving or half of the um, pouch in there. So I, that's about three fourths cup of rice, but um, I think the total servings are two cups. So a little bit less than half of my rice. I'm gonna take some of my beans and do about a half cup portion there to the side. Then we're gonna take out our peppers. Turn off my broiler because <laughs> I'm already really hot. <laughs> okay, we're gonna pour that fresh lime juice over our freshly cooked tofu and peppers and onions. Mix that together. Okay, now I'm gonna take a good serving of those peppers and onions into my bowl. Some tofu, oh, it smells really good when you squeeze that lime juice on there. <laughs> so this uh, video will be on our Live Life Well YouTube page if you wanna reference it, if you decide to make this recipe yourself. So here's our bowl so far. And we can add a few more toppings. I've actually got some plain Greek yogurt that I'm gonna use in place of sour cream. Gonna do a dollop of that. <laughs> and then, yes, I have avocados. I actually have tomatoes and onions. I could make my own guacamole topping, but this is another just quick convenience item that is sometimes nice to have on hand. Um, and the thing about, you know, packaged items like this convenience items, they don't always, um, it doesn't always mean that they're worse for you. You just wanna check the ingredients. So these ingredients are avocados, tomatoes, salt, onions, red onions, cilantro, lime juice, and jalapeno peppers and garlic. I'm so sorry, guys. Miles, really, go on, dear, go on. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry if that grosses you out. <laughs> so I'm just gonna add some pre-made guacamole on there and voila, I am ready for lunch. And I've got tons of leftovers that I'm going to package up for my lunches for the rest of the week. So I hope you give this recipe a try and play around with it and make it your own. Thank you all so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.